let us pray. O God, in whom sinners find mercy and the saints find joy, we pray to you for our brother Jonathan, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that he may be delivered from the bonds of death, admit him to the joyful company of your saints, and raise him on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, mourned and heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want in verdant pastures. He gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. (laughs) 
A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself. No one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. All who believe in me will live forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare?
conquers evil. Light dispels darkness. Good Friday doesn't win. Easter Sunday may feel so far off, but it is coming. For John, it already has. I have to admit that when I first heard the news of a fallen police officer, I didn't realize of my own connection. When the funeral director and the family called to ask me to be here today, it all came rushing back. You see, back in 2019, I had the privilege and honor of witnessing the sacramental marriage of, of Stephanie and Jonathan at the Church of Our Lady of Lords in Malvern, where I was then the pastor. I have to be honest, I do a lot of weddings, and so often one wedding does sort of blend into another. But there are a few things I remember about that day, about that ceremony. I remember how absolutely nervous John was in the sacristy before we began. I remember going to the door and greeting Stephanie and seeing how absolutely beautiful she was. And I remember going back to the sacristy and saying, John, I don't know how you did it, but you got the most beautiful bride of the year. I remember his laughter, his pleasure with what I had just said, and the tears welling up in his eyes. Most of all, I remember that emotion as Stephanie walked down the aisle. I'm not sure everyone else in the church could feel it, but as I stood next to John, I could feel his heart beating in his chest. I could feel him shaking. I could sense his emotion. Stephanie told me the other day that she never felt as loved in her entire life as she did when she got to that altar, when she stood next to John. And that was because you were. He did love you with every fiber of his being. And that love brought forth the gift of the one making all the noise in the front row, Ryan, you guys were John's everything. The city is mourning a cop. The tens of thousands of police officers outside are mourning a brother in arms. But Stephanie and Ryan are mourning their everything. The gospel that was just proclaimed began with a line that always grabs my attention. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Whenever I, I read those words, I often think that they feel somewhat cold and cruel, especially at a moment like this. How can our hearts not be troubled? How could they not be troubled at the loss of a young man, the loss of a police officer, a son, brother, husband, a father? How can our hearts not be troubled at the seeming loss of care for life in our city and in our world? The lack of care and safety for our men and women in blue, we shouldn't be here right now. Of course, our hearts are all over the place. But take notice what Jesus Christ didn't say in that gospel. He doesn't say, do not be angry, do not be sad, do not cry, do not ask why. Why? Because for those of us who have faith, the faith of Jesus Christ, we know and we believe that this is not the end. It's not the end of John's life, nor is it the end of our relationship with him. It has changed painfully, yes, of course, but it has not ended. Everything about this church, about our faith, about our prayers today, is a reminder that we believe that death is not an end. The fact that we find ourselves gathered here today on Holy Saturday, having just gone through Good Friday, awaiting Easter Sunday, is a reminder of why we can be here together today at all. It's a reminder of why we don't just go home and pull the covers over our heads. These days call us to faith. This moment calls us to faith. We believe in a God who loves us so much, who loves you so much, that he would suffer and die on the cross for you so that we could live forever. 
Yesterday afternoon at the cathedral, the Passion of Our Lord was chanted so beautifully. And as I heard it chanted, I couldn't help but think that as Jesus Christ hung on the cross, he did it for John. He did it for you. He did it for me. I wish, I wish I had the answers that we all have, the questions, answers to the questions that we all have right now going through everyone's mind in this church and outside. If God loves us so much, why did this have to happen? We know, though, that evil is real. Sin is real. But so too is goodness. So too is heroism. We see that with all of you in blue here today. We see that in how John lived his life, both at work and at home. He lived not for himself, but for those around him. John didn't need to make this sacrifice to prove how good he was, to prove how heroic he was to Stephanie. She knew firsthand, from the moment they went on that first blind date, to that beautiful emerging friendship, to dancing in New Orleans and knowing that he was the one. She knew, she knew how good a man he was. Monday just proved it to the rest of the world. My friends, our faith teaches us of the connection that we share with those who have gone before us. Because of our baptism, because of the memories and love that have been shared in this life, we believe that we can help those who have gone before us, and they can help us. The memories, the stories, the love doesn't just disappear. They don't just fall away. Rather, they build a bridge between this life and the next. And so those memories of John on and off the job those memories of John as a son, brother, husband, father, they bind us together. And so we pray. Here and now we pray in thanksgiving to God who gave us the gift of Jonathan. We thank God for the time that we had with him and for the example that he leaves behind of selfless love. We pray for the protection of his brothers and sisters on the job and for the health and safety of his family. And I have to add, I think John might be upset if I didn't say, we pray for his islanders too today. <laughs> Our hearts are broken. Lord, come be with us. Help us find a way forward. Help us heal, Lord. Help us to be fidelis ad mortem, faithful unto death like Jonathan was. Help each of us to leave here today to live lives not for ourselves but for those around us. Help us, Lord, to take Jonathan's mantle of service and goodness onto our shoulders, that we might go forth challenged and changed to be more like him. Help us to see the light, Lord, through this darkness and a way forward. I wish I had to make a way to make this easier for us, to make sense of this. I don't. And anyone that tries is crazy. All I know is what our faith teaches, that because of the cross of Jesus Christ, because of Easter Sunday, we will see John again, because the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And so we say, eternal rest grant unto John, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Please stand and let us pray. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, and so with confidence we ask him to save all of his people, living and dead. Our responses, Lord, hear our prayer. For Jonathan, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother Jonathan, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Jonathan, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all those who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Please be seated. At this time, I'm happy to invite the mayor of the city of New York to address us. Call walking into the hospital and being told by my detail that how close to home this was. Jennifer, who has been with my detail for some time, from the day I was elected, it was just natural friendship that we've developed, that my team told me was her cousin. And as I walked into the room and saw Stephanie and the family, it was just so overwhelming. And I know I had to stay there for a while, but I just couldn't. I needed to find a space inside the hospital that I could just sit down and reflect for a moment. We often look at this role and you see the professional part of it being a mayor, but there's a humanistic part of it. There's a part that when you have to go tell a wife with a newborn child when you try to explain the doctors massaging the heart to get the heartbeat back, when you're trying to just make sensibility of losing a young man at this level. This morning when I got up and do my prayers, and I got on my knees, I asked for some way of articulating to Stephanie how much this city loved your husband. And Rose is just not possible. There's not much I can say to take away this loss and what it means and what it means to all of us. And just the similarities as I reflected on the sacrifice that Jesus made, what it means to give your life to your family. I thought about John 15 and 13. Greater love have no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. But also thought about Jessica, Kevin, Jonathan, 
Jennifer, members of the law enforcement community, those four members of this family that decided to adorn the uniform to protect the people of this city. And then I joined on my personal life, Bernard, David, Corey, Jean, my family members who also joined the law enforcement community. But I couldn't help to think about what it meant to Jennifer and Jason. Jason, to lose an older, younger brother. Bernard means everything to me. I think about him all the time. And every day that he wore that uniform and he was his sergeant, I wanted him to come home safely. And who would big sisters do? My sister taught me everything I knew. She was the big sister for us. Even when mommy had to go to work, Sandra would take the five of us and taught us the basic things that we needed. And when I think about Fran and what it was like for Mary to be at the cross and watch her son sacrifice, it's such a biblical moment, it's such a Calvary moment of the commitment that a mother gives and Stephen watching his son. Nothing is more unnatural than a parent burying their child. Such a battle, such a painful moment, and we have to dig, dig deep to find purpose through this pain. So today we mourn the tragic death of one of our own, police officer Jonathan Dillard, the husband to Stephanie, the father to young Ryan, hero to all New Yorkers and all Americans. The outpouring of grief for this young man is real and it is raw. When you see the photos of him with his wife and young son's son, our hearts break. And I hear over and over in my ears, I've been shot, I've been shot, I've been shot. And even with the acknowledgement that he was shot, he fought and took the gun out of the hand of the person who would take his life. He ran towards danger, taking risks, making arrests, and undoubtedly saving lives. Him and that team of young men, men who are part of the CRT team, they went out every night to assist in removing thousands of guns off our streets. In just three years on the force, he was decorated three times for excellent police duty. And despite all of those interactions with bad people doing bad things to good people, he adorned that uniform to go out and continue to fight on behalf of the people of this city. So today we mourn his life. We reflect on his bravery. We remember his sacrifice. And above all, we stand together united as one. Those of us who have put on the uniform now and know it could be one of us at any time. We are bound by the oath in our honor to stand together and salute his service as we commend his spirit. The powerful feeling will carry us forward. It will give us the strength to continue to fight for justice protect and defend our city and provide love and support to Jonathan's family going forward. Let us pray for Officer Dillard. Let's pray for his family. Let's pray for his friends. Let's pray for his mother and father, Fran and Stephen. Let's pray for his sister Jennifer and his brother Jason. They are part of our family we must make sure they get the love and nurturing that all family members receive. And we will come for you today. And we will be with you throughout this lifetime. And I stand with you during these difficult times as the mayor of this city and to Officer Dillard's second family, the men and women of the New York City Police Department. We say goodbye to Jonathan, your brother. But we also say thank you to each and every one of you it is harder 
Today, to be a police officer more difficult than the times that I wore the uniform. You're inundated every day with those who are loud, but they're not the majority. New Yorkers admire you and love you and support you. And don't let anyone make you believe that the numerical majority stands for what this city stands for. This is a city of law and order, not disorder. And I believe we will continue to move our city in the right direction with your sacrifices that you play every day. Sometimes it feels like our society does not appreciate that, but they do. And today, on the saddest days, I want Jonathan's families to know. I want all the families of all our police officers to know. Your mayor stands with you. I am you. I know what it is to adorn that bulletproof vest and stand on street corners and protect the children and families of this city. And we will continue to do so even in the midst of this pain. And as the elected representative of this city, I can tell you, tell you without question that the vast majority of New Yorkers share our vision. We mourn Jonathan's death. We will never forget his sacrifice. And we will do everything in our power to ensure that all New Yorkers and police officers live in the safest big city in America. We're going to make sure you have what you need to do your job, including making sure that violent career criminals are held accountable for their crimes and doing all we can to end gun violence in this city. That's what Jonathan, Jonathan was committed to doing, and that is what we will continue to do. So today is a somber day. It's Easter Saturday. Today we mourn the death of Jesus and remember the despair of his family and followers. Before the day of his glorious resurrection, scripture continues to tell us, let's lean into the commitment and de dedication of our faith. My heart goes out to you, the members of the law enforcement community in general, but specifically to the family. I feel your pain. I wish my words in some way bring some level of comfort. And when I left that hospital, and I sat in that Jeep, and just thought about this young man taken from us in a senseless act of violence. I thought about all of those moments of going into hospital rooms, seeing family members and loved ones who lost their loved ones to violence. Yesterday, when I got rebaptized. I wanted to recommit myself not only to my faith, but to the city of this great city of New York. And I ask you to please join us as we turn this painful moment into a purposeful moment and continue to pray and lift each other up during this time. May God bless you. May God bless our city. May God bless our country. May God bless the men and women of the New York City Police Department. Thank you. I'd like to invite the police commissioner of the city of New York. the gracious people of the town of Massapequa, to Father Duffy, Father Gentleman, assembled clergy, and the entire St. Rosa Lima family, thank you for your warmth and for welcoming us into your community. Mayor Adams, thank you for being here. To Fred and Stephen, Jennifer and Jason, Stephanie and little Ryan, to extended family and friends, 
to police officers across our city, around our country, and every person mourning with us today. On behalf of the entire New York City Police Department, I extend to you our deepest and most sincere condolences. There is nothing that can truly prepare us for moments like this. As police officers, and as the people who love those officers, we understand that days like today are possible. We live that reality, knowing everything is always at stake. But when that day does come, no matter what we think we know, suddenly we are lost. For everyone who knew and loved police officer Jonathan Diller, March 25th, 2024, was that day. And now we are here, bearing another of our city's heroes, here again, far too many times. We are in darkness, searching for answers to impossible questions. And the actual pain we feel is so much worse than anything we could have imagined. But even under the weight of that relentless grief, there is one thing that can lift that veil and lead us out of the shadows. And it's right outside the doors of this church. I'm talking about the line, the line of men and women in blue who stand straight and tall against any hardship, any threat, and any fear. It's a line that stretches back 180 years from Tottenville to Floral Park, to Wakefield to the Rockaways, and through the hearts of millions of people around the world. It's been tried and tested, but it has never wavered. It stands behind us when we need courage, it stands beside us when we need support. And it stands in front of us when we need protection. And through all things, the line runs unbroken. And today, it stands here for all of us and upholds the legacy of our fallen hero. His given name was Jonathan. His immediate family called him that. But much to his mother's dismay, many called him John. But no matter the name, he was always the same guy, a caring person who loved the people in his life with everything he had. In the years following John's graduation from the Maritime Academy, Stephanie became the center of that love. In his eyes, she could do no wrong. And she felt the same way, except for maybe the mustache. <laughs> While deployed at sea during school, John grew it out, way out. And she hated it. The whole family did. But thankfully, his signature beard grew back. But these two were soulmates, drawn to each other for so many wonderful reasons. Both families were deeply rooted in service. John's grandfather was a fireman. His two cousins, Jessica and Kevin, are both members of the NYPD. Stephanie's brother, Jonathan, along with her cousin, Jennifer, are also on the job. And Stephanie herself serves on the front line as a nurse. For all these amazing people, Service is the family business. And also, when word came that Jonathan would join the NYPD, it wasn't entirely a surprise. For those who knew him best, however, it was slightly ironic. The jokester who was never much for the rules would now be the one who defended them. And how fortunate for the NYPD he did John was 28 when he entered the academy, so he had done some living by that point, and he brought both his life experience 
and his big personality to his 50,000 new brothers and sisters. When you talk to the cops who work with John, they'll tell you there was a time in their career before they worked with him, and then there was everything that came after. He was special. He left a lasting impression. And after you met him, everything was different. Everything was better. As part of the community response team, we sent John out to restore order, to fight against lawlessness. We told him to go out there and make this city a better place to live, to work, and to raise a family. And that's exactly what he did. In just three years, he made dozens upon dozens of arrests, the majority being felonies. When he had a good arrest, he would text Stephanie, often with a bunch of smiling emojis. He loved this work, and he was darn good at it. And what would become his final arrest, made just days before he was shot and killed, John took a loaded gun off our streets. He was literally doing the work that we asked him to do, that we needed him to do. And he was making a real difference. He went toward the danger. He put himself in harm's way. And he did it so that other New Yorkers wouldn't have to. He did it because he was a New York City police officer. And even though he was only with us for a short time, he quickly became one of our best. Not just a great cop, but also a bright light to so many. But in an instant, in a sudden and senseless act of violence, he was gone murdered by a career criminal with absolutely no regard for human life, who carried an illegal gun and thought nothing of pulling the trigger, murdered while protecting the people of our city. And even after he was mortally wounded, John kept fighting. He wrestled the gun out of the shooter's hand, saving lives until the very end. And now, as we reflect on John's remarkable life and pay tribute to his sacrifice, here stands the line. But they don't stand alone. The eyes of the world are once again on the New York City Police Department. It's another reminder that we are all connected and we are all here for Jonathan. So in this awful moment, as we struggle to make sense of our sorrow, our memories of John give us strength because we know that his death will never be his legacy. His grit, his devotion, his love, the best of him that carries on through all of us, that is his legacy. Over time, we will honor John in many different ways for the hero he was for the life he lived, and uphold our most solemn vow to never forget. That eternal recognition begins today, as I am honored and privileged to promote Police Officer Jonathan Dilla to Detective First Grade. His new shield number is 110. His son's birthday is fitting because more than anything, 
more than being a husband, a son, a brother, or an NYPD cop. What John loved most in life was being Ryan's dad. Stephanie, I've gotten to know you over this past few days, and your strength is an inspiration to all of us. But right now, despite the tens of thousands of people here to support you, you probably feel more alone than ever. But I need you to know you will never be alone again. And I'm not just talking about the line outside. Of course, they will always be with you. They will always be there to protect you as John did. But John will be there too. I promise you, he won't miss a moment. On Ryan's first day of school, John will be there. When he picks up a lacrosse stick or goes to an Islanders game, John will be there. When he brings home his first report card and it says Ryan is just like his dad, John will be there. And as Ryan becomes his own man, showing the world what a remarkable person he is, John will be there. And in your quiet moments, when you are left with thoughts about everything that could have been, remember, John was there always. Stephanie, you told me your husband often turned to you and simply say thank you for his son, for making him a dad. Today, I say thank you to you and Ryan Thank you for sharing John with us. We are all better because of him. May God bless Detective First Grade Jonathan Diller. God bless his loved ones and keep them in your prayers. And as always, God bless the New York City Police Department. We are the line and we stand with you forever. Thank you. I'd like to invite the president of the PBA. My heart goes out to this family. And I know this last six days has been a living nightmare for every single one of you. And I spent this week wishing there was something more that I could do. And I know every police officer in this church and lining outside this church feels the same way. When we heard the news, that our hero brother was shot. Every single New York City police officer was praying that he was going to make it. And as fellow police officers in this church did everything that they could to get him to Jamaica Hospital and save his life. We're praying still wishing that somehow, some way, we could bring Jonathan back home. And we feel that way because we're New York City police officers, saving people's lives, helping people. It's in our DNA. It's what we do. It's what Jonathan did, too. There are many paths in life that we can go in. And we know Jonathan graduated from Maritime College. He went into the maritime industry. But he knew 
that the path that he was going to take one day was to, write it, to raise his right hand and take the oath and become a New York City police officer. His goal was to rise to the top of this department. And he was on his way to doing that, no doubt about it. And he went out every day to protect the people of Queens and New York City. And on Monday, he put his life on the line and did what cops do. He confronted two dangerous, evil individuals. And it cost him his life. It cost this city its bravest protector. It cost his family everything. As police officers, we know we don't do this job alone. Our family is always there with us. The good times, the bad times, the ups, the downs, they're always there to support us. As police officers, we know we have a difficult job. But there's nothing harder than losing one of our own. And seeing a family devastated this past week. We have to believe that Jonathan was put on this earth to make an impact on people's lives. And there's no doubt about it, he did that, serving the people of Queens and New York City. He made an impact on the lives of the police officers in this church from the 105 precinct and CRT, making them better cops. And when I heard the last couple of days, a few police officers talking to me, he was an amazing cop. And one cop said to me, he was a better cop than me. And what most importantly, he taught the cops in this room, he taught them to be better people. And I say to my fellow police officers, wishing that we could do more for this family. Yes, we could do more. Yes, we have to do more. We have to be there for this family every step of the way, the way Jonathan did. We have to stand together for justice for our hero brother. We must honor him every single day the way he would want, do the job the way Jonathan did. I want this family to know that your entire Blue family in this church, across this city, across this country, will always be there for you. The PBA will always be there for you. We will always honor our hero brother, police officer Jonathan Diller. God bless you all. At this time, I invite Jonathan's everything, Stephanie, to come forward.
Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Stephanie Diller, Jonathan's wife. I have not had the opportunity to speak before at this moment, so I would like to say, on behalf of the entire Diller family, thank you all for the support this week. The outpouring of love our family has received has been overwhelming, and we're forever thankful to everyone. With every hug that I've received, I just picture each one is from Jonathan. I wish Jonathan were here to see the incredible kindness and generosity that has been shown to our family, but I know in his own way he is here watching over us. I am so proud that thousands of people across the country are calling Jonathan a hero, but the truth is he has always been a hero to Ryan and me. The rest of the world is just catching up. While he was beyond proud to be a member of the NYPD, his career was only one of his many roles. I want to also honor Jonathan for who he was out of the uniform. I am not sure where to start, and I could probably talk about Jonathan for hours, so I'll start from the beginning. Jonathan was born and raised on Long Island, the son of Fran and Stephen Diller, and brother to Jennifer and Jason. He was the youngest of the three, which obviously means he was the mischievous one. But he also had the sweetest heart and the guiltiest conscience, so he would always smooth things over by making his mom handwritten apology letters. He grew up taking memorable ski trips with his family, playing lacrosse and hockey, and forming friendships that would last a lifetime. He was a connector, the kind of guy that would draw people in and could find something in common with everyone, a friend to everyone. Following graduating from St. Mary's High School, he attended SUNY Maritime, where he lived with his cousin Robert. He loved telling stories of traveling all over the world in the ship, seeing beautiful places, and making amazing memories. After graduation, Jonathan and I started dating after getting set up by our mutual friend, Evan. I remember on one of our very first dates, we went to see a movie. He was so tired from work that he fell asleep in the movie theater. He started snoring so loudly that the people around us asked me to wake him up. <laughs> but of course, if you ever ask him the story, I'm the one who fell asleep, started snoring, and embarrassed him. It didn't take long for me to realize how special he was. He loved to make everyone laugh, and he had the most infectious personality. When you talked to him, he really listened, and he made me feel like I was the only person in the room. Early on in our relationship, Jonathan's job required him to be away for a month at a time. He was really proud of his work driving ships, and he made sure to send emails letting me know that he was always thinking of me. We must have exchanged over 100 emails through the years that I will forever cherish. I would excitedly wake up to emails from him with hilarious subject lines such as, Jonathan Diller is a stud, and sweet messages like, I'm going to spoil the heck out of you when I get home, and I'll be home before you know it. You're going to blink, and I'll be in front of you giving you a big kiss. I quickly knew I found the person I was going to marry. I never doubted how much Jonathan loved me, because he always told me. He was absolutely my soulmate, and we could just understand each other with a look. Anytime I entered a room, I looked for him, and knew that the place I belonged was the spot next to him. He could always make me laugh, and that was one of the things I loved most about him. He would make an absolute fool of himself just to make, get me to crack a smile. We had a connection that not many people get to experience in their lifetime. In November of 2019, after our wedding, I remember being so nervous to walk to, at our wedding. I remember being so nervous to walk down the aisle in front of so many people. But as soon as the church doors opened, I saw him look at me. I realized how lucky I was. He looked at me like I was his whole world, and he always treated me like I was his whole world. Together, we lived a very simple life in Massapequa. We worked hard, we relaxed at home when we could, and we, had, we got the cutest dog in the world, Tucker. We did everything together, and I really mean that. We were best friends. He would call us Batman and Robin, but he said I was Batman and that he was Robin. <laughs> when I would meet people, I would say, if you like me, just wait until you meet my husband. He worked for his family's company before deciding to become a police officer in 2021. 
Everyone was so proud that he found something that he loved to do, and he was exceptional at it. He would go in early, stay late, work overtime, all because he, he just loved it. It's no surprise he was an incredible police officer when you think about the type of man he was. He was always putting people above himself, dropping everything to help someone in need, and speaking up for what was right. He was a fierce protector of everyone around him. He spoke his mind and wasn't afraid. I always admired him for his honesty and courage. He was my absolute greatest confidant. But nothing compared to the, his best role of all being a dad. Jonathan always wanted to be a dad, and he wasted no time being the greatest one. I will never forget the look on his face when our son was born. I don't think we could ever achieve a greater happiness. He was so proud of Ryan. Every time he did something new, it was like an explosion of joy from both of us. Jonathan wanted nothing more than to show Ryan off to anyone and everyone he knew. He was excited that Ryan's first word was Dada, and I remember I would playfully try to get him to say Mama instead. But now I never want to stop hearing Ryan say Dada to me. I couldn't have asked for a better partner to have a child with than Jonathan. We were a team. He would always kiss and hug me in front of Ryan and said that he wanted Ryan to see his dad loves his mommy so much. And then we would pick him up between the two of us and smush his cheeks with kisses together. When you fall in love with someone, you think you can't possibly love them any more than you do right now. But then you get married and you think, okay, now there's no way I can love them anymore. And then you have a child with them, and guess what? You love them even more. Jonathan taught me that true love has no limit. Our lives were pretty much perfect until five days ago when everything changed forever. He was called into duty, and in typical Jonathan fashion, he didn't run away. He did what was right, and he did what he loved. He wasn't the type to sugarcoat anything, so I won't sugarcoat this. This is devastating. It's a devastating, senseless, and tragic loss for so many our family, our friends, and the entire city of New York. It's a shame that someone who brought so much positivity to the world was given such a negative ending. There was so much he was looking forward to, like watching his siblings build a life with their spouses, seeing his friends become fathers, and watching his son grow. It breaks my heart that Ryan was robbed of getting to know his, to grow up with his dad. Jonathan had so many things he wanted to teach him like how to play ice hockey, how to drive a car, ride a bike, to watch Ryan go to his first day of school and watch him graduate on his last. I am eternally grateful that Jonathan made me Ryan's mother. If I am missing him, I can look, at, look to Ryan to feel close to him because his son is just like him, always making people smile. And I promise to raise him to eat, be even more like his dad. It's hard to imagine how long I have to wait to see Jonathan again. When the doors to heaven open for me one day, I hope to see Jonathan standing there looking at me just like he did on our wedding day. My husband died a hero, but he also lived as one. Our world will never be the same, but I know I speak for everyone when I say I could not be more proud of him. It's been two years and two months since Detective Rivera and Detective Mora made the ultimate sacrifice just like my husband, Jonathan Diller. Dominique Rivera stood in front of all the elected officials present today pleading for change. That change never came. And now my son will grow up without his father. I will grow old without my husband. And his parents have to say goodbye to their child. How many more police officers and how many more families need to make the ultimate sacrifice before we start protecting them? I don't wish this kind of pain on anyone. Jonathan lived his life doing good for people, and it's now time for people to do good for all the officers he represents. Which reminds me, to all his friends in the 105, CRT, and the boys, he wanted me to say, I love you. Jonathan, Ryan and I don't know how we're going to live without you, but I am so amazingly grateful for every single moment we had with you. Rest in peace, Jonathan, the man who captured my heart and now all of New York's.
Please be seated. At this time, I invite the Bishop of the Diocese of Rockville Center, His Excellency Bishop Barris, to address us. With Timothy Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, and the great champion and friend of the New York City Police. With Bishop Robert Brennan, the Bishop of the Diocese of Brooklyn, he himself the son of a very dedicated police officer and FBI agent who is here with us in solidarity today. We offer you, Stephanie and Ryan, our prayers and sympathy and to your entire family. Cardinal Dolan, Bishop Brennan, and I want you to know that as we cross the bridge into the Easter Vigil, into Easter Sunday, the Easter Octave, and the Easter se season, the people of God of the parishes of Nassau and Suffolk County, 133, the people of God of the parishes of the Diocese of Brooklyn and the Archdiocese of New York will be praying deeply and beautifully for you throughout this time. In just a few hours, we will be celebrating the Easter Vigil. And that Easter Vigil is filled with resurrection of Jesus Christ symbolism that is extremely powerful. Stephanie and Ryan, the lighting of the Easter fire, that fresh fire outside of our churches, is a beautiful expression of how the risen Lord and the Holy Spirit will be with you in the ebbs and flows of your grief in the moments ahead and in your future life. That lighting of the Paschal candle, that singing of the exalted tonight, that Paschal candle symbol symbolizes the triumph and victory of the risen Christ over evil, sin, and death. Stephanie and Ryan, the risen Christ, the victory of the risen Christ is yours today and will be with you each and every day of your future lives. God bless you. At this time, I invite the uniformed members of the department and our elected officials to fall out outside.
Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. For one day we shall joyfully greet Jonathan again and enjoy his friendship when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Jonathan in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We thank you for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Jonathan in this life as a son, brother, husband, father, police officer, for they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowships with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Jonathan forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. John, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, let and let perpetual light shine, shine upon him. him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In peace we take our brother to his place of rest.
this. You've been watching the funeral services for Detective Jonathan Diller. You can find a full remembrance of his life and work on our website, cbsnewyork.com, and we can now return you to regular programming. Hi, meteorologist Craig Allen. We've got a nice afternoon coming up for us. Not the evening and the early part of the night necessarily, but by Easter Sunday, it'll get better. We're looking for a high this afternoon close to 60 degrees, mid 50s to around 60. The city may get up to that uh, 59 degree mark. There's your record. There's your normal. So we're actually going to be above average today and with less wind, it'll feel even better than it did yesterday. And so you can see these are the things we'll be talking